Ludus Volpez. Welcome to Ludus Volpez. My name's Kirsty. And I'm Phil. You join us as we do a playthrough of Red, Red Rising. Rising. Red Rising is set in a dystopian future um, and is based on the novels of Pierce Brown, which I'm going to have to admit up front that I've not read. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, Pierce, neither have I. I'm How, sorry. However, having played the game a few times, I'm quite tempted to pick yeah. at least the first book up and have a look and see what I think of it. Definitely. Um, so it's set in a dystopian future, you're going to be um, creating a hand of cards. It's very much a hand management, a hand creation game. And you're going to try and create that hand of cards to score mega points towards the end of the mega game. Mega points! Me apparently mega points. But you, know, you can get there. You! <laughs> you can get there. Now, um, the rules for this game are incredibly straightforward and incredibly simple. <laughs> there is complexity there, we'll come on to that as we go through the rules. But if you want to join us down at the board, we'll go through those rules now. Oh no. <laughs> Clatter clunk. That was clumsy. Okay, so you, I know, you join us on the board. Uh, this is set up for um, the start of our game. We've got a couple more things to do before the end, uh, before we actually start play. But we can actually go through um, uh, the, the rules for Red Rising. What's the matter with you? You're fidgeting. Red Rising. Red Rising. Hold that thought. Ta da! <laughs> My riding hood. What? My riding hood. Why? My it, riding hood. So, sorry, it's it's red, red rising. Riding hood. No, red rising. It's a different set of books. Um, it's nothing to do with red riding hood. It has no vicious wolf. It has none of that. It has no granny. No granny uh, involved. Uh, there is a wolf on the box. There is a wolf on the box. I understand that you could easily See? be confused. See? You shouldn't have See? been confused because that's not riding. Red. Rising. Oh, damn it. <sighs> We don't like even need dress. the damn costume you know like changes. The dress. What's the problem? Oh, look, if you're going to be dressed as anyone, you can be dressed as Eo. Well, at least we picked a redhead. Um, so, yeah, you can be dressed as Eo. Hold that thought. Really? Ta da! I don't know why I agree to these things. Honestly, I don't. Does Fine. it work? Does it, it, it work? Well, it, it, yeah. <laughs> You might need some orange okay. spray paint for your hair to go from Aww. auburn to orange, but that's fine. It looks... It's got lighter in the sun. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Let's shuffle Eo back into the deck. And and now, now we Sorry. can finally go through some rules. Now Kirsty's appropriately dressed. Yes. Question mark. Okay, in Red Rising, um, quick guide on setup. So you're going to put the board in front of you. You're going to put your wolf head. You're going to take the lid off the wolf head. And we are going to be moving most of this stuff out of the way eventually because it's hard to play. Um, uh, and your deck of cards are going to go there. These are your helium tokens. This is your dice. Rising dice. Rising dice. This is the first player token, the crescent moon. And the sovereign token is this kind of thing here. It means he's got the sovereignty each round. Yes, it does. Okay, so... Um, we're also going to pick a colour. I've gone for red, which makes me house Jupiter. That's blue, actually. Yes, I've gone for Not blue. Red. <laughs> which makes I've me gone house for Jupiter. Green. Which is? Diana. Okay. We all have a power that triggers when we gain the sovereign token, but before we get into any of that, we're going to place our um, little spaceships on fleet track. Take that bag out of the way. And place your. Influence tokens somewhere close at hand. My power as Faction Diana is that every time I gain the Sovereignty token, and it also this power also allows that if I hold, have it and hold it and it doesn't get stolen still by Phil... It's still considered gaining even if you hold the token. I get to place an Influence on the Institute, which is just here. So let's go over the board quite quickly. Um, as Kirsty's jumped the gun a little bit there. I'm sorry. We have the Fleet Track here, and we have the Institute here, and we have our Helium here. Really important because they're going to trigger our in-game conditions. Um, and the game will end when... One player has got two of those 
areas to seven. So the fleet track to seven, seven cubes on the influence token, or seven helium. If one player has meets two of those conditions, the game will trigger the end game, and we will carry on playing around until each player has taken an equal number of turns. However, the other way of triggering the end game is for um, amongst all the players at the table, all three triggers to have got to seven. They also have victory points at the end of the game. We'll talk about victory points in a moment. Not going to talk about victory points quite early on, but this game, it's probably a little bit easier to talk about the game and then talk about victory points because mm. that's where the complexity lies, lies within the game. So what else have we got on this game board? Well, we've got four locations. Now, they are known as locations. This is the top of the location, and so in, in this instance, the auctioneer is at the top, and the pathologist is at the bottom of that location. So we have Jupiter, we have Mars, we have Luna, and we have the Institute. These are going to matter when you draw a card from one of those piles, um, and you're going to take the benefit of each of one of those columns. The gameplay is really straightforward. Um, each of these locations will start with two face-up cards on it. These have been chosen at random. And each player will start with a hand of five cards. So that's my hand of five. Kirsty has her hand of five. On your turn, you will take a card from your hand and you will deploy it somewhere on the board. This action is known as the lead action and can be referenced on your quick reference sheet just here. So when you take a lead action, you're going to deploy a card from your hand to a location on the board. You may then also take the deployability that sits on that card. And the deployability is highlighted by this box here, a box with an arrow showing deploy. Deploy is different to place, and some cards will tell you to place rather than deploy. Um, and that is worthy of note. So you're going to deploy. Um, the deploy card for its deployability. Then you have one of two choices if you're taking the lead action. You can either take the top card from one of the other locations. When you take the top card from the other location, that card goes into your hand. Fine, that bit's done. You will then take the benefit of each location. So if you take a card from Jupiter, you'll move your spaceship up the fleet track one space. If you take the top card of Mars, you will gain a helium token. If you take the top card of the Institute, you will place an influence in the Institute. And then Luna will gain you the Sovereign token, triggering your Sovereign ability as well. Um, which, for both of us, is a repeat of another action already on the board, but that's fine. Um, so that's how the game plays. Um, and it's very simple and very straightforward. It, there is a... Un Another um, alternative end to the lead action, so instead of taking from the top of another location, you can draw from the top of this deck, add the card to your hand, and roll this rising dice. So around the centre are the four actions we've already discussed. So place an influence on the Institute, move the fleet track up one, gain the uh, sovereign. sovereign token, and gain a helium. There is also, draw the top card of this deck and place it face up on a location. And there is also this symbol, which is Dispatch. Mm, banish. Banish, sorry. Correct. Banish a card from the top of a location. Now, banishing will create a banishing pile. and will kind of like a discard pile. Mm. That banish pile, there are cards that allow you to interact with the banish pile. And there are cards that will score you points at the end of the game because of the banish pile. So we'll need to discuss that as we go. The other action, instead of leading, is to scout. And scout is very simple. You take the top card of this deck and place it on the top of a location. Basically what you're saying at that point is that your hand of cards is as complete as you think it needs to be right now. There's no move that you can make that's particularly beneficial. So you're just going to increase the number of cards available in the game. Now, what's the game about, really? The game is about scoring victory points. Shocker, I know. But you're going to score victory points for your fleet track. The victory points are highlighted underneath up to maximum 43. You're going to score points for the Institute, for each cube you have on there. And the persons, person or persons with the most cubes there will score four points per cubes. You have a maximum of 10 cubes, so a maximum of 40 points from the Institute. The person with the second most cubes there is going to score two points per cube. 
and the person with the third most cubes is going to score one point per cube. Anything past the third, no points. The sovereign token, whoever holds it at the end of the game is going to score 10 points for holding the sovereign token. Helium is worth three victory points at the end of the game. So however many helium tokens you've got, three oh, victory three. points. Yeah. So that's what you've got on the board for scoring. But as you can see, if you've got 10, 10 and 10, which would be very unlikely because the game game would have triggered and you've done something yeah. spectacular <laughs> to get there. But you've got 43, 40, you've got 83 points, plus 30 points, you've got about 120 points. And a good score, according to the book, is over 300. So where are those other points coming from? Well, on each of the cards is a printed points value as well. And you start the game with a hand of five. Um, and they range between um, kind of five and 30 on some of the cards. Uh, one or two, I think, are 35, 40. Maybe. Yeah, there are. And then at the bottom of each card is a way that card can score you more points. And that can be done in a number of ways through associations with other cards, through associations with the, um, uh, the dispatch pile, through associations with things that are on locations. All kinds of things mm -hmm. can, can accumulate your points within the game. So you're going to be keeping an eye on the bottom of your cards for the bonus score. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that's going to score you negative points at the end of the game is any cards that you have beyond seven. So if you have eight cards, that eighth card is going to score you minus ten points. The ninth card will be in a, another minus ten and so on and so forth. So minus ten for every card you have above seven. Now, it's almost impossible for a card to score you negative points based on that minus ten. Mm -hmm. So expanding your hand beyond seven is not a terrible idea. It just means that the accumulated benefit from those cards is slightly less. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be looking to expand your hand. To get to sort of 250 to 300 points in your hand, you're probably going to want to get to about 10 cards anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something worth considering. But with that explanation, we're kind of ready to start playing. I think so. I think so too. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, talk about the scout. we have talked about scout. Okay. So I will take. Uh, do you want to take the first player, or shall I take the first player? Can I look at my cards first, and then <laughs> tell you. Okay. And the other thing I will be doing is I'll be playing this um, this game kind of with my hand open, so that you can see what I'm doing and see what I'm thinking. Shall I do that thing? No, it's fine. Just one of us. Okay. Um, which should give Kirsty a slight advantage, but that's okay. Um, because the complexity in this game doesn't come from the game mechanics. The complexity comes from understanding card interactions and how you're going to make it work. And also really understanding strategy a little bit as well and how you're going to play the game to achieve the victory you want. So, I am going... Are you going first, by the way? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, fine, okay. so the first player token is now locked, and the game progresses by take an action, take an action, take an action. It's, that, it's a, a fairly straightforward mm -hmm. set of mechanisms. So. so, I'm going to play the online gambler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to place that there. So placing it to Mars, she's now locked Mars as a column that she can't take the top of that location as a second part of her action for a lead. Uh, and I have to name three colours and reveal the top uh, card of the deck. And if it matches any of the three colours that I say it, then I get to keep it. Yes, you do. So I will say blue, gold and grey. Okay. You, you can, you can oh, do I can a big agree. reveal. So it's, it's grey. <gasps> oh my god! So you get to keep it. But that was merely the deployability. Kirsty now takes a second part of her action, which is either to draw a card from one of the locations and take that location benefit, or draw a card blind from the top of the deck and roll the dice for the benefit. I'll take this one from Luna. Which, which gives also me. gives Kirsty the sovereign token, which yes, triggers your sovereign ability. Which allows me to place one influence on the institute. Apparently. <laughs> okay. Over to you. Okay, so this is my hand of cards, and 
The first thing I'm trying to think about doing is getting to a point where I can increase my hand size. So I've got the vlogger here, um, and that will allow me to draw two cards to increase my hand size. So that's quite a powerful ability. So, But to trigger the vlogger, I need to be ahead of Kirsty on the fleet track, which I'm currently not. I can't play that card this turn. However, I have Morningstar. Now, Morningstar's a great card, worth 35 points, but minus 15 unless it's with another blue card. Um, and there are three blue cards named on that card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Morningstar, and if deployed on Jupiter, advance once on the fleet track. So I'm going to play Morningstar to Jupiter. Now, I'm going to advance once on the fleet track. Now, that doesn't protect me because Kirsty can easily catch me up on the fleet track. But if I draw from Luna, I gain the Sovereign token, which yeah. triggers my ability, and my ability is to move up one on the fleet track. So I now move to the second space on the fleet track. Mm -hmm. I have that card sat in front of me, which is the Janitor, and it gives me a very good chance of being able to play the Vlogger and get two cards next turn to increase my hand from five to six. Okay. Do, 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 do. Kirsty should be trying to stop me, but... In the reality of the game, normally would be she wouldn't know what I've got down no. here. So I am going to place Danto down on the Institute. Move a copper or a white from any location to directly under this card. So I think there's a copper there. Auction, yeah. So put that under there. So you're starting to see some of the fundamental mechanics of the game, which is controlling the cards available at each location. Um, I'm not going to gain that card. I'm going to take Jupiter. And can you move me up the fleet track, please? I can. I actually took Morning Star, sorry, not Jupiter. Yeah. You Can took you from Jupiter yeah. to the Jupiter yeah, benefit. Right, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to play the Vlogger, as we all knew I was going to. So the Vlogger allows me, if you're further up the fleet track than the player to your right, give them the Vlogger and gain the top two cards of the deck and end your turn. So instead of deploying that to a location, I deploy that to Kirsty. Okay. I draw the top two cards of the deck, add that to my hand. Oh, that's nice. And that ends my turn. Are you sure you shuffled them? I, I've given them a very good <laughs> shuffle, actually. What is interesting, though, is the colours that I said have actually come out. Yeah. That's amazing. Would you like to I'm come? very well connected with this game. Telepathic, some might say. Yeah. Oh, I cheat! She's not a cheat. Not a cheat. No, I know you're not a cheat. She's got the powers. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to play the Hypnotist. In clockwise order, starting with me, each player selects a card from their hand and banishes it, and then we gain the top hand, top card. Of the deck. Yeah. So I am going to banish this one. Okay. Which one are you going to banish? So I'm currently thinking about, I've got two blues now, and blues can be quite powerful together, so I'm going to think about keeping those. Um, the janitor inf interacts with blue as well, so I'm probably going to keep the janitor. Um, I want to keep that one. I'm not too worried about greys. That gains me a helium eventually. So I'm going to get rid of the pulse armourer. Oh. And Kirsty draws first from the top of the deck. Yeah. And then I do. Okay. Which I got trig. Nice. Oh, nope. Oh. You haven't taken a card. Oh, uh, yes. So that was still the deploy action. Yeah. So. Do, do, do. 
I will take pathologist. Can you move me up the track, please? Yes, I can. Thank you. Now, it's worth noting that greys and oranges have special abilities. So a grey card at the end of the game can always you can always specify it as being an a, an alternate colour in addition to the grey. So if you've got things that require you to have certain colours for points accumulators, that can be really useful. The orange allows you to do the same, but for a named character. Mm -hmm. So it becomes itself plus a named character. So if you're struggling to find, so for example, um, I need uh, Orion is strong with packs, uh, the terminus and or the packs which are three different cards, I could use that orange as a, a named person. I'm not going to at this instance, but I could. You can't actually banish it. I know. So I'm going to deploy Dr. Virin to Mars, and she allows me to draw the top two cards of the deck and place them underneath her in any particular order. Um, so we're going to place that like that. We're going to place that there, like so. And that goes on to Mars. Now... Part of what I'm doing at the moment is I'm also trying, I'm going to take Danto from there mm -hmm. and place an influence in the Institute. What I'm trying to do is draw more cards out of the deck to give me more possibilities and to give me more options. And at the same time give Kirsty more options as well. Okay. So I'm going to play the pathologist onto Luna, mm -hmm. uh, banish the bottom card of this location, if it's not this card, so that gets banished, it, it gets placed there, and I'm going to take the auctioneer. Okay, and place an influence on the Institute. Yes. Okay, so... So I'm going to place the janitor on top of this yellow card here, which allows me to move that yellow card to another location. Mm -hmm. And if I do so, uh -huh. I increase one fleet track. Now I could pick that up again, to gain an extra card, but I'm not in this instance. In this instance, I'm going to draw from the deck, and I get the lawyer, and I roll this dice and get the benefit off the dice, which is a helium. Nice. So I take that helium. Okay. I'm going to play the the auctioneer back to the institute. Mm -hmm. So. I'm choosing you. Mm -hmm. You get to choose one helium, advance on the fleet track, or place an influence. Which one would you like to do? I'll take a helium. Okay, so could you advance me on the fleet track? And I'll put one there. And you get the other two. Yeah. And then I will... So believe it or not, we're getting close, quite close to the end of the game. <laughs> nowhere near me yet. I'll take the janitor to have... Because I haven't got any healing yet, and I'm sure I want to know what it, everyone's raving about. Really? <laughs> You're okay. Okay. So at the moment, the lawyer does nothing for me. Um, it allows me to place my influence on the issue, but the additional bonus points are if with a white, not the judge, or if with the judge. Mm -hmm. uh, the judge isn't out, to my knowledge, it might be in Kirsty's hand. Um, and though I've not seen any whites out at the moment, mm -hmm. so I'm going to play the lawyer to Luna mm -hmm. and place one influence on the Institute. I'll do some catching up there. And I am now going to take a card blind because I don't mm -hmm. want any of the cards that are out there at the moment. And I get Joffo nice. and roll the dice. I get this, which allows me to move up the fleet track once. Oh, we're going a bit quick, aren't we? Yep. <clears throat> okay, so I will take the janitor. So I put it on top of the yellow. It allows me to move that card on top of another location. Yep. So. And advance once on the fleet track. Yeah. So I'll move you up one. Put that there. I'll put it there. And I'll take from there, which gives me 
the sovereign token, which allows me to put one of those out there. So Kirsty is rapidly getting us towards the end of the game. I'm not doing it, by the way. I'm which, really like, not. So Kirsty will say this. No, I'm not. Uh, she might not be doing it with intent, but she is intentionally doing it because they're the cards she's playing. That's worth note. Um, you can't. Um, Maybe I need to start picking from there instead. <laughs> I haven't done that well, yet. Well, you also got the dice on that. It doesn't necessarily help. Banish the top non gold card from any other location. If it's not grey or obsidian, um, gain one helium. So I'm going to go here mm -hmm. onto the institute, banish her, um, and I gain a helium for that. Nice. And I will. I'll draw blind again actually. Which banishes a card. I will banish him. Okay. Kirsty, your go. Mm -hmm. Just checking what I've got. Okay, I'm going to place the Administrator on the Institute. It allows me to get two more cards from the deck and place them under that card in any order. So we've got Romulus and the Howlers. Um, Both gold cards? Yeah. And put them there, like so. It's getting quite full at the Institute. It is getting quite busy down and there. And then, so that I slow down the game, I'm going to take Antonia and just have a healing. I'm going to try and slow the game down a bit. <laughs> so, I'm still stick with these two guys as um, potentially my stronger play. But unfortunately, I can't trigger this ability, but I, I, this one's going, like, we're almost at the point where this is worth 25 points for me. It can go up to 45 points if I can get to 9 or 10 on the fleet track, so that's going to be my target. Yeah. Um, this one will give me the points additional to my fleet track, plus if I'm with Pax Telemanus or the Pax. Um, I haven't seen any of those. No, we haven't. So I'm up looking for any of those or an orange to come out. Nice. Now... The Obsidian card is doing me no good whatsoever at the moment, and out of all of these, the only one that's really tempting to keep is Trig, because Trig at the end of the game, um, for each grey or yellow on all locations, will score me five extra victory points. Nice. So I'm going to start with um, Jofo, mm -hmm. and we're going to play him to Luna. Okay. Um, does nothing for me, but I'm also going to take from here mm -hmm. and place an influence on there. Okay. Try and extend the game a little bit. I am going to scout. It's an odd choice. Well, I don't want to necessarily get rid of any of my cards. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I will go there and take it here. No, you won't. You scouted. So the scout uh, action. The scout action. Oh, I'm getting that location bonus. Sorry, my mistake. So I'm going to play the administrator of the institute, revealing the top two cards from the institute. Wow, a lot of gold. Oh, <laughs> we want that one. We do want that one. Well, I very much want that one. So that's going to go there. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to take a holiday from... Huh. Actually, no, I'm going to take the janitor to move me up the fleet track one. <gasps> I'm trying to slow the game down and you're speeding it up. I'm playing the game. <laughs> I'm not trying to speed it up or go slow on. it down. I'm merely playing the game. Sugar? Okie dokie. I am 
I'm struggling to get cards right now. That's one thing about this game, it's very difficult. And you you did banish the vlogger, which was one of the best ways of getting I know, but cards. There, it was pointless at the time. I, I didn't want to get rid of any other ones. Okay. Still don't want to get rid of any of these. I'm going to have to do this and just... I'm going to put this on the Insta sheet. Okay. And... Nice. There. Okay. I'm going to place Colonel Valentin. I'm going to place him on Jupiter. Um, I can move one gold from any location directly under this card and I can then gain that card should I want to. I'm going to take Romulus from there. Mm -hmm. Under him, I'm going to gain Romulus. End of your game. End of my game. The ghost card runs so quickly. I still don't want to lose any of my cards. I'm stuck in a rut now. So this is part, part of the, like the, the way the game can get you stuck in um, if you don't want to trade your cards in. But at the same time, the game encourages you to cycle through some of your cards because it's one of the it's one of the only ways to get a bigger score. Yeah, it's really hard to know what to do right now without triggering the end of the game. Um, I will put this on Luna on oh, Mars. Sorry, and take a because I'm just trying to. Okay. Extend the game a bit. <laughs> Just play the game. I am playing the game. <laughs> okay, you know what, you're trying to extend the game. Just please play the game. Um, I'm going to put Romulus here. Gain one blue from this location and banish Romulus unless deployed directly on top of a gold. So he'll get banished. Mm -hmm. I will take the packs. The packs, obviously, because then you're going to win the game. Uh, because at least I'm playing the game. I am playing. Um, and then I still get to draw another card. So Romulus has increased my hand size by another card, which is quite nice. Now, having a quick look around at what I might want, um, I am probably going to take the developer of this instance. So I've now got a slightly bigger hand of seven cards. Do I change my gameplay at this stage? Is it too risky? Oh, and I put that out. but I can't win with the cards I've got. I don't know what to do, don't know what to do. Let's look at that. 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 <clears throat> oh, it's, I'm gonna, I've got no choice because I'm stuck in the rut that we're referring to. So, put that one there. Again, sovereign token. Again, to sovereign an token and put an influence out. So I'm really surprised, because mm -hmm. I expected you to take Lysander. I, I wanted to take Lysander, but how was I supposed to take Lysander without putting a card out that I need? But put a card out and hope to get it back plan and play to get it back. Um, but I think you'd steal it because of the card it is. You don't have to and play that, that card, you can play any card. Yes, but they all interlink. That's the issue. <laughs> Maybe I should have just done it. The, also, the other thing, by putting that card out, would I have triggered the end game? One card? Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it would get you... Oh, How would it? I don't think it could. I'm going to move, we're moving these out of the yeah, way because it becomes see. really yeah. difficult to see the top part of the board. Um, you need three. Okay, no, yeah, you're right. Okay, go on. Um, I'm going to play Danto. I'm going to play Danto to here. I can move a copper or a white. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move the administrator over here. I can gain that card. I don't want to gain that card. So I'm going to play that there. And I'm going to take the hollow designer. I'm going to bring that in here. 
Now, the reason I'm taking the hollow designer is because I've got a grey card that gives me benefits if there are yellow or greys on locations. I'm going to use a hollow designer to try and draw a lot more cards out um, of those colours to start to really push some uh, point scoring. Okay. And that gave me this and a movement of fleet track. You'll go. Why did it begin so? Because I took a card from Luna. Okay. Um, oh, my cards are just pumps. Um, There's only one way to solve that. <laughs> Play them, cycle them. Oh no. That supports those two. That ends. doesn't end the game, but it actually... Now, part of what Kirsty should be thinking at the moment, not to tell people how they should be thinking, <laughs> is that I've got seven cards, so my hand is likely to score more if I've managed it in the least bit well than five card hand. So Kirsty really needs to start thinking about how she grows her hand now. Okay. Okay, you got six cards. Um. Right. I'm going to have to just make a decision, aren't I? Yep. The people want to know. I'll probably never get it back. Well, I probably won't get it back. Um, okay, I'll play... The Judge to Luna. Oh, I'll the take... Judge did exist. Yeah. I'll take Lysander. Okay. Which? Then the top card gotcha. of the deck. For the Judge? So, Oh, yeah, yeah. You get a helium. Yeah. yeah. I didn't quite see how that was ending the game. It wasn't that one. Okay, fair enough. It was a different one. Fair enough. I decided to put that one out, but actually that is a risk. Okay, so I'm going to play the hollow designer to Luna, which draws two cards, places them under the hollow designer in the order of my choice. So it's Ugly Dan, he is kind of ugly. And Sun Hua. There's a lot of greys in this game. No. Oh. So they're going to go there. Mm -hmm. The hollow designer is going to sit on top of them. Nice. And I will take Fitchner from the Institute. Placing an influence there. I can't get to the judge now. Oopsie. <laughs> so... You might be able to get to the judge. I wouldn't give up on the judge just yet. I might as well get rid of this one. Because it's pointless now. Um, I will play... That one there. Place an influence on the Institute. Oh, no, that's a helium. It's on the Institute. Which has got cursed to seven influence <laughs> on the Institute. And... I'll take the Howlers to put another one out on the Institute. Okay. So we're going to play the developer. And we're going to play the developer... I'm going to gain any other card from this location. I'm going to take the auctioneer. Okay. That's quite powerful and useful to me. That ends my turn, so I don't get any additional benefit from that, but I now have the auctioneer. Hmm. It's a powerful card, isn't it? It is. But so is the developer, because it allows you to go fishing for any card in the stack. Yep, it does. So, I don't know if I 
I'm going to play it back. I am stuck. Feeling rock in a hard place. I'm get rid of that one because I can't guarantee to have that arm in there. That's good there. Ooh. It's hardship. So, move the top card from another location to the top of a different location and gain the original location bonus for that card. So, if I move... Is it on the location you played to? Move the top card... Of another location to the top yeah. of a different location. Oh, wow, okay. So you still need to play where you figure out where you're playing it to first, but... So I play it to there, mm -hmm. but take that card, which means I get to go once at the fleet track. Is that right? Where you, move, that where you move that card to? It has to go under this, doesn't it? I know. Sorry. To the top of a different location. So I put this there, mm -hmm. and then take that to go once at the fleet track. If yeah. you don't mind moving me up. Not at all. And then you get your action as well. Um. I'll take the administrator. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to play this one to here. Oh, should I have moved up the fleet tracks I took from Jupiter? Yes, you should. Sorry. Thank you. I'm going to play this one to here. Mm -hmm. If you play directly on top of a green, yellow or blue, oh. move that card to the top of another location and advance once on the fleet track. Oh no, you just triggered the end of the game. I haven't. Advance once on the fleet track. I'm then going to take from here to advance on the fleet track again. But I've still not triggered the end of the game because I have hit seven there, you've hit seven there, but we haven't hit seven here. Okay. However, when you get one more fleet track move, you will have triggered the end of the game. Yeah. So actually I need to do something that's going to give me... Oh, pants. I don't know what to do now because I get stuffed over no matter what I do. I need to have two moves and whatever I do is going to create the end of the game, I think. Well, as long as you don't take a fleet movement, you're alright. Okay. If you take a fleet movement, that is your last turn. So I'll place this on the Institute. Mm -hmm. If deployed on the Institute, reveal top two cards of the deck and place them under in any order. Thank you. So I've got Arius and Co. Go that one. like that, and then I will take the Janta, which gives me the sovereign token, and one influence. and allows me to put an influence there. Okay, you're going. So I'm going to play the Hollow Designer to Luna, mm -hmm. which does top two cards. Nice. So we've got a blue. Ooh. Most influence on the Institute or tied for most. That's not going to consider to me. So we're going to put those in that order. Mm -hmm. And the Hollow Designer is going to go on to there. Okay. And I'll take 
from there. That one there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to trigger the end of the game, and I'm not sure what to do because I think whatever I do, it doesn't trigger. Well, actually, no, if I place it somewhere else. So if I've got the janitor, if I decide to place it elsewhere, it won't trigger the end of the game, will it? As long as it's not deployed on top of a green, yellow or blue. So I can put it... Yeah. ...there. You can. And then I'll take that there. Which gives you an influence. There. Okay, you're good. that to the Institute which draws two more cards out. Ooh. Invictus or Eo? Uh -huh, EO. Play that in that order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take from Jupiter. <gasps> Me further up there. Okay. I've maxed my scoring on Vigra now. Wow. Which is 40 points on that card. Wow. Okay. So if deployed on Luna. Top two cards? Yeah. I've got no institute to play, so I've, yeah. Oh, you're taking from the institute. You still need to take a card. Oh, no, I still do that, though. Yeah. I can't do that. Nope. You can't, can't do, do Mars that. for helium. And I can't do that, so I'm going to have to do that one. You can do, you can take from there, just not, you don't have to be able to place a cube to take from there. Take that one and take a... Um, a helium. Yeah. So how much healing have you got? Two, six. four, six. So Curse's next go is almost certainly going to trigger I'm the really end game. I'm really trying not I know, to trigger But the I end think I'm going to be triggering points. end game soon right. as well. So I'm going to get rid of Fitchner. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm going to deploy into the Institute for the influence which will trigger the end of the game. Oh. Um, which needs to happen anyway because this is getting crazy, crazy. It does have to happen. He's going to go there and places an influence mm -hmm. on the Institute. And I'm going to take blind from the top <laughs> and gain a helium. And that is the end of the game because we've all played the same number of turns. So. Um, I didn't work out how I wanted it to work did out. Not work I was out. expecting one more go. Were you? Oh, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we get a score pad, which is just behind me. Oh. Ta da! Panic. So, Kirsty. So the very first thing we do is we look and for any end game triggers, which is this top row here. So I got two. Um, I can either gain a helium, advance once on the fleet track, or place one influence on the institute. So I will advance once on the fleet track for that one. And I could treat this card as if it was one other colour, but I don't really think that's a benefit to me. Um, that's annoying, the report. If I got two more helium, the report mm -hmm. would have been good for me. You could have gained a helium. Yeah, but I just only gained one helium. Mm. Um, whereas that scores me points on cards as well. So we'll do You've that. won this. We'll see. I don't know why I can tell you've won it. <laughs> okay, so have you got any end game triggers that you want to trigger? Don't I don't have any end games on my cards. Okay, so uh, we then score cards. 
Mm -hmm. So I'll go through my card scoring, and then we'll go through Kirsty's card scoring. So, first and foremost, we're going to start with Trig. He's worth 15 points. He's worth an additional 5 points for each grey or yellow on all locations. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep, 5. So that's an additional 25 five. points. So 25, 30. He's worth 40 points. Yeah, you already beat me already. So he's worth 40. So this is where you can come in tricky, but um, the auctioneer is worth 12. That's just 12 points, so fine. Um, Colonel Valentine is worth 10 points plus 5 for each gold on all locations, which we have 1, 2, 3. Three, so that's 15 points, so he's worth 25 points. That's him scored. The packs, um, 20 points plus 15 if deployed with Darrow, Sev Severo, Orion, Vigra or Pellas. Vigra's there, so that's 35 points. Yeah, that's 35 points for that one. Vigra, Virga, uh, 10 points plus 30 points if you're in space 9 or 10 on the fleet track, so that's 40, 40 points. So that's that one. Orion. 18 points, plus 10 points if deployed with Pax, the Pax, or Telemannus, so the Pax is deployed with. So that's 28 points, plus wherever I am on the fleet tracks, that's 38 points. That's a good one. And then the report is worth, nine, uh, worth 6 points. So, I'm just going to quickly tell, I'll say quickly. Um, so, that's 40, 80... 105, 117, 117, plus 35 is 147, 152, plus 38, 160, 190, plus 6 is 196, which is not bad, but also not a great score in your card score. You're probably looking for another 50 there, normal, for a really good score. So... Oh yeah, that's your mine. Sorry, Chris. It's okay, it's fine. Okay, your cards. Okay. Uh, so. The that janitor. One was the last. I wasn't planning on holding on to him. I was planning on picking up another one, but you ended the game. But so you have ten two blues. For yeah, so ten. Plus ten, so yeah, twenty. Twenty for, for the janitor. Not been awful for you. No. Uh, 5 plus 20 if I am... Um, Which you are. Yeah, so 25 for that one. 35 for this one because I have got Pellis. Yep. The Jackal is 10 plus 30 with the Sovereign Token. So 40. I was so sure you were going to steal the Sovereign Token on the end. And that's like, I was like, oh, don't, what do don't, I do? Don't. What do I do? Um... So 15 plus 15 because I've got the jackal. So 30. Mm -hmm. So you're doing all right. Mm. Still not beating yours though. Uh, 10 plus 20 because I've got the sovereign token. That's another 30. Mm -hmm. And then the howlers is 20 because I haven't got Severo. Severo because I was about to take it, but then you put the thing. Yeah, I was hoping for an orange so I could trigger somebody else. I can't remember what it was, but anyway, it didn't mm. happen. So, that is uh, 25 plus 35 is 60, 78, uh, 60, 100, 120, 120 plus 60 is 180, so Kirsty scored 200 on her cards. So she's ahead of me on cards. So Kirsty may well have won this. How many cards you got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, so we've both got 7, so we're not losing any victory points for cards over 7. So my location on the track scores me 43 yeah, points. You've, you've beaten that. What's your location on the track score you? 21, 21. points. Um, 3 victory points for each of your helium. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. And I got 3, 6, 9, 12. Um, 10 VP for the um, Sovereign Token. Mm -hmm. And you score 4 VP, so, so 40. 40. And I score 2 for each of mine, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So I think Kirsty's won, but I don't think it's by a massive amount. Oh god, I got that wrong again. It's be 14 there, and 40 there. So, 200, and 21, 229, 39, 49, plus 40, 
is 289 for Kirsty. 196 plus 14 is 100, uh, 210. 253, 63, 65. So 265. There you go. You won. <laughs> So I wasn't six, I expecting that. 265 for Kirsty. No, and no, it's... 265 for Phil. 265 for Phil and, and 289 for Kirsty. Yep. Let's just clarify that. They're fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that is Red Rising, and that is yes. how you play. And obviously, I wouldn't normally play with an open hand. I just wanted to talk you through some of my thinking and yeah. what I was trying to achieve. I really would have liked to extend my hand by another two or three cards to get a really nice score. But overall, uh, two reasonable scores. Um... Not the 300 target score that's no, in the book for no. a super score, so we're getting there. We got there. Um, but yeah, you probably need another two cards in your hand. Yeah. Even with the negative points, it's worth doing if you yeah. can really manage that. It's very rare to have a card that's less than 10 points. Yeah, it is. So if, you're, if really you've is. got a card that's, for example, uh, uh, I'm just trying to find this one, and you know that you've got, like, for example, uh, Atonia is 15, and with the Jackal, she's worth 30. So if you know you've got that and they're two extra cards, that's 30 points, you know, it's minus pushing, 10 yeah. is, the, you know, it's still 20 points yeah. at the end of the day okay. if it was an extra. So we've played this game about six, seven times now, which is, is good going. And the games mm -hmm. don't take very long. Um, we extended this game slightly <laughs> because yeah. to see a bit more play. Um, but Kirsty, what, what do you think so far? So <laughs> I really enjoy playing this game mm -hmm. although sometimes it can feel as you could see it was like oh quick what do i do to <laughs> slow down so i can increase my score because it, it's difficult to get the cards out yeah it's very difficult to get new cards into your hand um there is a feeling it's one of those things where it's kind of early in the game it's kind of casual oh, i'll take a from there i'll move on yeah, the track i'll yeah. cube out i'll grab a helium whatever and it's really casual, um, but you get sort of the first, when you, when you start seeing people getting close to those Four, trigger five, points, yeah. you're like crap. Actually, <gasps> I, and it yeah. might even be you that's accelerating the game a little bit. And you're like, right, I need to slow this down. But sometimes it's really hard to slow down. Yeah, it's not it's not as straightforward to slow down as you think. As you could see, yeah. I was like, okay, I don't want to do the fleet trap because I'll go too quick. I don't want to do Luna because that makes me put an institute. Uh, an institute make you know. It was all leading to yeah. me running towards the end game, and actually one of the cards I didn't want to put out, but I was tempted to, was um, Pelus, which is five points because it's such a small one, but it advances me twice up the fleet track, and because of the card stat being yeah. there, I thought that was going to then end the game, and I was like, well, do I don't I? And, yeah. But also that would have gifted me and forty forty points. Yeah, another yeah. It would have been forty because of where I was going on the fleet track. So yeah. it, if you'd have given me that, you'd have prob it would have been yeah, you'd have lost that level, basically. Yeah. Um and and that's the other thing to think of when you're playing the game. Even though I was playing with the hand open, when you've got a closed hand and you but you know someone's grabbed a couple of blue cards mm. and you've got a really valuable blue card because certain like the 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 the, the blue faction um, tend to focus on the fleet track and benefit yeah. points from the fleet track. If you know someone's pushing that pilots, way, aren't they? yeah, or spaceships. Yeah. If you know someone's pushing along the fleet track, you don't want to give them a card that's going to score them forty, fifty no. points because it's really not worth it. The other thing to watch for are, and I I expected more orange to come, which is why I banished that orange first, and I wish I'd kept hold of it. The other thing to watch for are these guys. Um, the greys can be really powerful. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the game, I was just trying to put as many cards out to get Trig and Colonel Va Valentin as many bonus points as I could uh, because scoring points for gold on all locations and grey and yellow on all locations. At one point, there was 35 points in grey and yellows on all yeah. locations. And he was, at that point, worth 50 points and my most valuable card. Um but that you manage some of those into mm. banish at one point. I was like, oh come on! <laughs> but it's the the game is always interesting, and I think we've gone through a phase of playing where the game itself we weren't playing strongly enough for how we progressed in our play of the game, no. and so we had a couple of really disappointing games, yeah. which were like they kind of just ended after fifteen minutes in a bit of a sort of like damp. You know, they, damp squib kind of firework. Going they, yeah, they did definitely make me feel like 
oh, is this the game I thought it was? Yeah. Because um, I think the factions we were talking about. The factions make a difference as well. The factions make a massive difference. So, as we've explained, there's the Diana which I played, which each time I gained the Sovereign token, it allowed me to place an influence on the Institute. Uh, Phil had Jupiter, which every time he had the Sovereign token, uh, you get to place it on the um, get increase on the fleet track. There is Mars, which allows you to Go take to helium. a helium. There's, um, is it Ceres? Ceres, Ceres which, which um, allows you to banish cards. So it almost allows you to have the power of, ah, I can see that he really wants that one. That uh, I'm going to banish that card because it's, it, it's yeah. very powerful. But actually also, you don't always necessarily want to banish the cards. So, especially early on in the game, yeah. you haven't, like, you've almost, like, you get the Sovereign, and you're like, oh, great, <laughs> I really don't want that. So the, you know, the the factions are extremely powerful. I yeah, feel. and they make a difference to how, yeah. how they make a much of a difference to gameplay. Yeah, they You're do. Ma they do, but the main points are in your cards, and they always mm -hmm. will be in your cards. You're looking for somewhere around two hundred and fifty to three hundred points in your card to get a really good score, and then mm -hmm. your the other points are kind of, yeah, you might get a you know eighty points, sixty points from elsewhere on the board, but your cards are going to really maximise your score. Um, and I think we got to a point where we weren't playing the game as hard as we could, as well as we could. So we might not, I think in those games, we weren't really drawing cards out of the deck and getting them on locations. Mm. We weren't really maximising the use of, like the hollow designer that puts two cards under there. There was one that was putting two cards under there. Actually, There's quite a few of those. And actually, you really want to be bringing as many mm. cards out of the deck as you can so that you can fish for the cards that are going to help you maximise your score. And it changes the way you play the game. I do think that a lot of that has been a learning yeah, process has. because you start off with going, oh, I don't really know what any of these cards... Like the first game, you're like, whatever. Oh, I don't know which faction's good, I don't know what colour's good. and I'm all, fa just gonna... all factions are good depending yeah, on are. what's happening. They are. So it's it's not, like just... yeah, yeah, they've all got different powers, You know, they all have different um, abilities. So never write off uh, no. a faction. Like They're all good in their different powers. And their different ways, but the first game is very, you know, the blind lead in the blind. No one knows what's good. It's yeah, and then you move on and you start going, ah, oh, okay, well actually, that worked for me last time. I might go for that again. Yeah. And I, I, everybody knows that watches the channel. I learn one way and I stick with that. So it was very hard for me. But you can't play that game. You this can't game do that, that with this. And I like that about that. But it does mean that you're kind of like, well, okay, I'm going to pick up the card. I've got no idea what it means. I need to take a minute to read it. And it is, when you're first playing the game, it is a bit slow because anyone that's new to the game, they're all feeling that. Yeah. And even now, we, there's cards that come out. I go, oh, I haven't seen that one before. That does something interesting. Yeah. But the artwork in this game yeah, is Yeah, it keeps you occupied. And the other thing to remember as well is there's no two of any card. Every card is unique. So you know if you're going for something, like for example, I don't know, this one needs Cassius. If you go, ah, it's there, and then Phil just goes along and banishes it, and I, I have no cards. I think Cassius is there somewhere. I oh, know it's not. No. I thought we'd have Cassius. But for example. Anyway. Sorry. Um, that's okay. Um, for example, that was there, and you know, you know, well, actually, if that's only worth 10 points without him, might as well get rid of him and try and go for another strategy. Yeah. It is that the more you play, the more you learn, the more you enjoy. So this game is definitely one that needs Multiple a plays. bit of patience. Yeah, I think it's for me, it's kinda of like a roller coaster ride this game. And it yeah. starts off feeling really uncomfortable, quite clunky in your first play, and mm -hmm. you're like, mm, ugh, I'm not sure I like this game. But you give it a second play and go, oh, okay, get it now. I'm mm. I'm playing the game. Um and you're not playing the game, you're kind of ticking the game over and then you hit that kind of four or five plays in where you're kind of, you're back into a slump again because you're not playing the game as hard as you should. Yeah. And so you're not seeing the cards you should come out in a two player game, you're not, even three or four player game, you're not seeing the volume of cards come out and it just feels like, oh, I'm not really enjoying this. And then you go, okay, how can I push that further? How can I how can I push it harder? And you start to look at the cards that bring more cards onto the table, into play, and you push and push. And suddenly the game comes to life again. Mm -hmm. And so you've had this kind of, it was hard. Oh, that was quite exciting, an interesting card play. Oh, God, it, it ended too quickly. I'm going to have yeah. to build my deck. Oh, okay, now I know how to influence the board state so that I can gain more of the cards I want to see. 
And it's around that sort of fifth play, sixth play, that I think the game for me really came to life. And before that, I was I was almost ready to put this game away and not play it again. Um, whereas now, I'm quite happy to bring this back to the table, but I would say I want to play this game with people who are in that sort of three, four plays already yeah. and they know the game and they understand. Because there is, although there isn't a... It's not a cooperative or even a semi-cooperative game, but there are definitely parts of the game that require other players to be in a similar mindset and to mm. be, want to play the game in a way that benefits all players. I think it's one that also helps you if you do back-to-back a few times as yeah, well. Yeah, it does. Movies. It definitely does. One thing as well, which also helps, you know, we were saying it's very hard to get new cards out of the deck, is on the turn overview, and obviously when Phil ran through the, the rules, about when you lead, you deploy a card and then you gain the card from another location. As Phil was doing quite a lot, was taking a card from the top of the deck yeah. and rolling the dice. Now, you have a chance that you could end up pushing up the fleet track. Or, or banishing the, um, a card. You know, or end up banishing, yes. But actually, you're getting more cards out then as well. Yeah, and there's a so, 1 in 6 chance of getting yeah. two cards out that turn that yeah. are brand new to the game, that particular game. So that's another way of doing it. And obviously the scouting as well, revealing the top card of the deck and place and not deploy it. So again, very similar, but it gets another few. And actually it means that you can hold on to the cards in your yeah. hand. So if there's something that you know, actually, I'm onto a winning formula here. I just need to tick over and make sure that I end up with the sovereign token. So I'm going to save that one card, Until which right allows me to yeah. gain it. You can just scout. And I, I like the way that that's almost balanced. I feel that... Although there are different powers and different abilities, I feel that they all, that, you know, the producers have definitely come up with a way of balancing in this game, yeah. which I think is really useful. Yeah, and I think from my perspective, I'm now ready to say that this is a good game and yeah. it's a game I enjoy playing and I want to play more because I feel like I know the game well enough. But like I say, I do feel it... It's hard work to get there, and if we mm. hadn't been if we hadn't been playing this for the channel, mm. there's a good chance it would have sat on the shelf and it might not come out. And in twelve months' time, I'd look at it and go, "I think I'm going to sell Red Rising," mm. because it's not worked for me. And that would have been massively unfair yeah. to the game because the game is there. You have to discover it, and it's yeah. not a game you're going to discover in the first three or four plays. You need to really play more, become more familiar with what's mm. there, and suddenly this really this really nice, good Click. game appears yeah. that feels like a really competitive game. That's over. It, it's not a long game. It, no. It's got some good tempo to it. The pacing is good. All sort of all Stonemay games with that have got Jamie as as a designer or co-designer have got that that oh my, you know play it's card, take a card, turn, move on. Turn, da, 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 and yeah. and actually the game comes <laughs> around really quickly to your turn again. It's not a slow game, and you it it ends pretty quickly. But you'll have been working hard to mm. get where you want to be and thinking hard to get where you want to be as well and it's nice and I really I do now really enjoy this game and I'm looking forward to playing more of it. I do think actually as well with the, the fact that it's based on a book series that obviously as we said at the start we haven't um, read right. the books um, but I do wonder if it's um, a way of um, the people who are interested in the series whether they are now fans of the game because it's very different getting yeah. board gamers into a game with the characters than it is to get readers into board games yeah so I... i'm intrigued are you a newbie then did you access this game via the book or did you access the book via the game yeah that's a good question and i think it's just, i think it's quite an interesting crossover there yeah and i think it's it, it's it's a game that might not be the easiest game for brand new gamers mm. to pick up and that could be an interesting challenge because it is based on a book series and it might well draw people in. Um, I do wonder if we did know the book series whether we'd find the game easier because we'd understand... I don't know about easier but maybe... Well, like you'd understand it quicker. I think it'd be sort of like you, you'd know a lot of the characters yeah. and you'd have your favourites anyway. Yeah. Um, if you've enjoyed that video please like and subscribe. We love making these videos and we hope you get a lot of interest and use out of them and subscribing helps us understand what people are liking and and helps us promote the channel further so please like and subscribe yes that thumbs up button is there for a reason use it please don't forget we're also on instagram facebook and twitter just search blue just full pass thank you for today 
See you soon, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.